Hello and welcome to Let's Start Playing. My name is Henry and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Gaia Project. Gaia Project is a game for one to four players and in Gaia Project players will be terraforming planets, placing and upgrading mines on these planets to form federations and also researching and developing new technologies. Victory points in Gaia Project are rewarded for a variety of different actions. You can see most of them down here on the scoring board. These different scoring tiles will score in each of the six rounds of Gaia Project, starting with this one and ending with this one. After a round completes, so after round one completes, this tile will be returned to the box and scoring will be continued on this tile here. How you score these tiles, if you mouse over them, it will tell you the scoring criteria. So this one will give you two points every time you build a mine during the round that it's active. This one will give you two points for each terraforming step you take. This one will give you five points when you build an academy or planetary institute during this round. This one gives you two points every time you advance in a research area. Four points for each time you upgrade a trading station. And four points when you build a mine on a GEA project for the green planet. You also have end of game objectives tracked along this board down the bottom here. And there are two of these for every game of GEA project. These are randomly picked as well as these objectives around here. And players will be rewarded points based, in, based on if they were first, second, or third in the ranking of achieving each of these objectives. And the scoring criteria for this game is bonus reward is the player who colonizes the most space sector tiles. Space sector tiles are these individual space sector grids here. So at the moment, yellow has three space sector tiles and red has two. We come back down here. We can see that's tracked along this board here. Yellow has three. And red has two it's also a third one here this one has six that's due to this number down here and this only applies in a two-player game a neutral player will come out and occupy one of the spots so if you finish behind this target you'll score in the lower bracket so if that one's first yellow would now get 12 points and red will get six points this one is rewarded the player who makes goods the most satellites and space stations Space stations are a particular faction's bonus. But what satellites are, uh, when you form a federation, you need to link them together using satellites. This will make more sense later. There are some rewards for leftover resources, converted free to one. And also players get four points for every technology free or higher that they research. So when scoring the research tiles, if we come up here, if I'm on area five, I would get 12 points. Four for this rank, four for this rank, and four for this rank. At the end of the game, I might have two of these columns at five and one at three. So I'd get 12, 24, plus four, 28 points at the end of the game for my different researchers. So before getting into the actions, I want to talk about the different resources and different boards in Gaia Project. Gaia Project has five different resources, as you can see here. Coins and ore are used to building various different buildings and you can see the cost of each of the buildings listed on the left hand side of each of the building rows. This one will cost two coins and one ore and this one will cost six coins and four ore. You can see how many resources you start with up here. 15 coins, four ore, three research and two QICs. We will do an income before starting the first round. So these amounts will go up prior to starting the actions phase. Ore is also used for terraforming planets. And the amount of ore it costs to terraform a planet is based on your terraforming research tree over here. At the moment, it will cost you three ore for each terraforming step. And you can find that out by mousing over this track here. And you can track your terraforming steps for each planet type down here. So for my faction, and my home planets are yellow, so for me to terraform a orange or brown planet to my home color, it would cost me one terraforming step. A red and black would cost two, and a blue and white would cost three. So for me to turn a blue planet into my home planet type, it would cost me nine resources to begin the game, because it's three terraforming steps, and it costs three per step. Knowledge is used for climbing up these knowledge tracks. So for me to make um, the amount of ore cost less, it would cost me four knowledge in order to climb up this track to the next rank. And every rank you wish to climb up any of these tracks, it will cost four knowledge to go up each individual rank. That's what knowledge is used for. 
QICs are used for a variety of different things. First of all, you can use QICs to transform these green planets into a home planet by spending one QIC when you go to build on top of this planet. Another use of QIC is to extend the range that you can terraform planets at. So to begin the game, you can only transform planets adjacent to your existing planets into your home planets. However, by spending one QIC, you can temporarily increase your range by two for that particular placement. Another use for QICs is to do these actions along here. These cost the number of QICs as listed above each of the actions here. And the last type of resource we have is power. And each player will start with a various amount of power tokens out on these three spaces out here on their player board. And whenever you gain power, you get to move your power around this board, eventually pushing it into location number three. So if I was to gain two power now, I would move two power from power pool one into power pool two. Once power pool one is empty, I would then start moving power from power pool two to power pool three. When I have an amount of power in power pool three that I want to spend, I can spend it. And I can spend it doing a variety of different things, including all of these actions along here and converting it into different resources as shown down here. However, if I do spend any power from power pool three, it will go back into power pool one and the cycle will have to begin again before you start gaining power into power pool three. You'll gain power mostly for your income. However, you can also gain power from, from other players placing buildings near your buildings. Each building in Gaia project has a power rating. The bottom row has a power rating of one. The middle column has a power rating of two. And these top buildings have a power rating of three. These are important for both gaining power and forming federations later. Each player will have a player board in their chosen faction. All the factions are asymmetric and played differently. I've selected a training game for our first game where the board is pre-set up with our uh, first mines already placed on the board. However, in a normal game, you'll have to place your mines manually and pick which faction you want to play. Details on all the factions can be found at the back of the rule book with explanations of their abilities. So along the bottom here, we have mines, and these are the starting buildings that you'll need to build to start building out on the planets on the board here. At the moment, this faction has three mines placed out on the board, one, two, three. So we can see three of these squares are uncovered and we have exposed some of these icons. These icons are income, so you'll get more income based on how many mines you have. This will give us ore, so the mines on the board will generate us ore. Mines can be upgraded into trading stations, which generate gold. These can be upgraded into Planetary Institute. When you do build your Planetary Institute, you'll get access to your unique faction ability. Your faction ability pops up on the right hand side of your board, as you can see it now. And this one says I can form federations with only six power worth of buildings. That ability gets unlocked once you build this building here. Each faction will have a different power in this location. And, powers, and factions also have a special power listed up here as well. For this faction, they get to start with three buildings on the board instead of the usual two. And they have one research in the green technology tree, giving them artificial intelligence level of one instead of zero. Alternatively, you can upgrade your trading house into a research lab. And research labs can be upgraded to academies. And these will all unlock a different income or ability under the token. I'll explain more on this when I go into the upgrade action. So the first phase is income. And players will earn income for all the hand symbols on their board, technologies, and bolster tiles at this stage. Hand symbols look like this. If I now did an income, I would gain three mines and one research. I'd also need to check on the board and see if I was at the location of one of these areas that give us income. The red player gets bonus income because they have two coins and one power gain from being on this technology here. We also gain income from these bolster tiles, which you'll need to pick going into the first round, but these are also picked when you go to pass at the end of every single round. Each player will gain one bolster tile. The second phase is the gear phase, and this is where planets that have gear formers on them will transform into gear planets. So make more sense later when I explain this technology track. And in this time as well, 
any power that's been moved to here to gigaform planet will move back into power pool one. This happens after income. The next phase is action phase where players will perform actions until they decide to pass. And this is where the majority of the game will take place. And then we have a cleanup phase where we will uncover any actions used during the previous round and remove the current scoring tile, moving on to the next round of the game. With all that said and done, let's get into a standard round of Gaia Project and how it looks like to play out all the actions. At the beginning of the first round, each player will need to pick a booster tile from the ones available. The number of booster tiles will be equal to the number of players plus three, so five in a two-player game. And these booster tiles will add an extra amount of income for you, as you can see along the bottom here with this little hand symbol, and also some special abilities. Let's quickly go through these abilities. What this booster tile says is when you pass, you gain two victory points for each trading station you have out on the board. So that's out built on these planets out here. This one works the same but with research stations, and this one works the same but with, but with mines. Over here, we've got a booster tile that gives us an action. So this is another action that we can do on our turn. And this one will give us one free terraforming step when we go to terraform and build a mine on a planet, avoiding the cost of terraforming that planet. These actions can be done once per round. And this one will let me build a mine or start a gear project on a planet that is three more spaces away than my basic range. This again is a one-time use for the round and you'll cover up this action once you've used it. So first round, I'm gonna pick this one. So now I wanna show you the actions that you can take during the action phase. We've just completed the income phase in which I gained two coins, three ore and one research. And I want to go through all of these actions that you can perform. First one is to build a mine. And to build a mine, you need to pick a new planet to build that mine on. The planet can't contain an opponent and it has to be within your range. Our current range is one because this is where our research is. Let's look at building a mine now. When I click on build a mine, you'll see that in the dark blue, this is all of the areas that I can build at my current range. In the, slight, in the dark green around those, that is the areas that I can build if I spend one QIC to boost my range by two. In the highlighted green, this is where I can reach planets if I spend two QICs to boost my range by four. Being one, two, three, four, five, because you always add your base range. If I wanted to build a mine on this brown planet, I'd select it and it would tell me the cost in order to place a mine there. The cost comes from the cost of building a mine, which is two coins and one ore, plus the cost to terraform that type of planet. This being a brown planet only cost me one terraforming step, and each terraforming step at the moment cost me three. You can also build mines on these green planets, and it will show you that it will cost you QIC. This shows me the cost of building a mine, the cost of one for extending my range out to this planet and another one to terraform the green planet into a into my color of yellow spending both of my QICs in order to terraform this planet into my color and place a mine on it and also perform this action by using this booster tile that I gained here if I was to select this it would give me the same screen and because this reduces the cost by one terraforming step I can terraform on this planet by just paying the building cost Let's now look at upgrading the structure. To upgrade a structure, you need to select one of your structures on the board in order to upgrade. Once you select it, it will tell you what you can upgrade it to along here. At the moment, changing this mine into a trading station would cost me three coins and two ore. If I look here, the cost is variable for trading stations. This is the only building that is variable, and sometimes it will cost three coins and two ore, and sometimes it will cost six coins and two ore. The cost goes down if you're within two spaces of an opponent. And because I'm within two spaces of this red building, the cost is reduced to three coins and two ore. If however, I try to upgrade this station, because it's not within two spaces of this red mine here, it costs me six coins and two ore. So there is an advantage for being close to your opponents. Another thing you need to think about when you upgrade a building or build a mine, you'll give your nearby opponents power. You'll give them power equal to the most powerful building within two spaces. 
In this case, if I was to upgrade this to a trading station, I would give my red opponent one power because they have a red building and this is the most powerful building within two spaces of my yellow building. Let's go ahead and complete this action and you'll see that the red player will gain one power from here over to here. And you can see that power was gained. Players will gain more power if they had bigger buildings adjacent to you. So if they had a trading station within two spaces, they would gain two power. This extra power does come at a cost, however. If you ever gain more than one power, you have to spend victory points equal to one less than the amount of power you just gained. So if you get in two power in a turn, you will have to lose one victory point. And each player starts with 10 victory points, giving them some to lose even at the beginning of the game. If you're unable to lose the victory point, you're unable to gain that power. I see this in action when I upgrade this red building to a trading station. So I'm just upgrading it now. And you'll see I'll get asked if I want to spend one of my victory points to charge two power. If I accept this, we can see two power go from power pool one into power pool two over here. A short summary of your power pools is spread out along here. So this is the total number of power you have in power pool two. And there's one other thing you need to think about when you're upgrading a structure. If you upgrade your trading station into a research lab or upgrade into an academy, you'll gain a tech tile. Let's show you how this works. So I'm going to upgrade this to a research lab and you can see a faint outline of a tech tile in the background underneath all of these buildings. As you can see, after creating this research station, I now have to select one of these tech tiles to gain. Let's have a look at some of the tech tiles that you can gain. So what this tech tile would do is increase your income, giving you one additional ore and one charge one power in every single round. Next one across will give us an immediate bonus of giving us one ore and one QIC. Next one gives us seven victory points immediately. Next one increases our income of gold by four. This one increases the power value of my planetary institutes and academies to become four. This one gives us an action, and this action we can use to charge four power. This one, we immediately count up the number of different planet types that we've colonized and gain one research for each different type. You can track how many different types you've colonized on down here. At the moment, yellow is only colonized on yellow. However, they'll have their little mind symbol placed on the other colonies if they had colonized those types of planets, and red only colonized on red. You can also count the middle Gaia project and the lost planet, which I'll explain later. This for the remainder of the game will give me three points whenever I build a mine on a Gaia planet. And this will give us one research and one gold as an income. Another thing that you need to think about when you're picking these tiles is you'll also gain one research on the track above the selected tile. So selecting this tile will take me up one space on this track. The exception are these bottom three technologies, which let you pick any track to go up on after selecting the tech. Let's say, however, I wanted this for gold. I would select this tile, gain the technology, and my research will go up one on that track. Another important thing about upgrading buildings is whenever you upgrade a building, the building that you've just researched from goes back onto your board, meaning that this trading station goes back and covers up that income. Managing your income is really important in Gaia Project to ensure you have enough ore and gold to keep building buildings in the following round. Let's look at the research action. The research action is how you can spend your research in order to go up on these various tracks. To do that, you simply click research and then pick the track you wish to go up on. To go up on any of these tracks will cost us four research points. Let's take a closer look at each of these tracks and what you gain from going up in the research of these tracks. The terraforming we've already explained, however, at rank one, we get access to two ore immediately. That's the same at rank four. And if you get to rank five, and only one player can get to rank five of each of these tracks, you'll get a special reward. With the terraforming one, you immediately get to claim a federation tokens, and federation tokens look like this. You need federation tokens in order to get to rank five on any of these tracks. You can see there's a little small symbol on the side here, and you need to flip your Federation token over to the grey side in order to go up to the fifth level. The same goes for these advanced technologies. And you can only get these advanced technologies if you're at level four or five on the track. However, if I went to this rank, I'd get this Federation token 
and I would get seven points and six coins as printed on the token. He also gained his Federation tokens by forming the Federation, which I'll show you soon. On the navigation track, we unlock QICs at ranks one and three and increase our range at ranks two and four. At five, we also increase our range by one up to four. And we also get to place the Lost Planet token out on any empty space on the board. The Lost Planet token counts as a new planet type and also counts as you having one mine in that area, allowing you to build from that area in all the usual ways. The artificial intelligent level track lets you gain QICs and you'll gain increasing amount of QICs based on the rank that you get. The Gaia project technology lets you place bigger formers out on the board and turn purple planets into green planets, which then you can colonize without having to terraform them. The number of giga formers you have access to increases with the rank. Here you have access to one giga former and it costs six power in order to place it out, which I'll show you soon. Here you get access to two giga formers and each of them costs four power to put out. And here you get access to three giga formers, each of them costing three power to put out. Your giga formers line up along here when they're available. As you can see, I've got one already available as I've researched this technology. Unlocking the last rank of this track will let you gain victory points equal to the number of green planets you've colonized plus four points immediately. Here on the economy track, you unlock additional income and you unlock additional income equal to the number of income printed on the rank that you get to. At the top here, instead of gaining an income, you immediately gain resources and lose all the previous income. And this science track works the same as the economy track, but with only the science resource. And the last spot is the same thing, but you immediately gain nine science. You lose all the income prior. Whenever you research past the middle line, you immediately gain free power. The technology at the top of the track can be taken whenever you build one of these buildings or by performing this four QIC action here. And taking these techs at the top, you need to place them on top of an existing tech you already have. You lose the effect of your existing tech and gain the new effect printed on these technologies. And you can find out what these all do by simply mousing over them. These also require you to flip a federation token. And when you gain one of these, you also get to pick which track you wish to go up in. For now, let's spend our four research. And I'm going to spend my four research here. Before I get into start a Gaia project and form a federation, the final two actions, I'm going to talk about converting resources. If you click on the convert button, you have all the options available to you of the resources that you can convert. Most of these are fairly self-explanatory. Power needs to be pulled from pool number three. So I can't transform four power into one QIC. So I only have two power in pool three at the moment. Same with this one and this one. One power to one coin. I'll spend one power from pool three, move it to one and gain one coin. One ore to one additional power token out on this board. Going into pool number one whenever you gain power tokens. I can also convert my QICs into ore and re research into coins. The most important thing about this board though, however, is this one here. How, how that works is I will sacrifice one power in pool two, removing it from the game, and push another power in pool two into pool three, like so. Now I have access to free power in pool three, allowing me to do this action. Let's now look at ways that you can spend your power in pool three. Once you have an amount of power, you'll be able to start using these actions along here. The cost of using these actions is listed above. So I need to spend three power from pool number three and put them into pool number one to use this action. Talk about each of these actions now. This one gave me two power into pool one, two additional pips to go around in the circle. This one will let me gain one free terraforming step used in the same way as this action down here. This one gives me two research tokens immediately. This one gives me seven coins immediately. This one's been used by my opponent, but this one I could spend four power to gain two ore immediately. But you can see this is blocked out for me. So each of these actions can only be used once per round. And as soon as someone uses it, it's blocked for all other players until the end of that round. This action lets me terraform with two free additional steps. So I could build on a red or a black planet for free. And this one lets me spend seven power to immediately gain free research. I may right now want to gain some additional coins. 
So I can select this action and hit confirm. It's only four of my power in pool three and moving it into pool one and blocking that action. Now let's talk about starting a Gaia project. Start a Gaia project, you need to select this action. Next, we need to select a purple planet within our range. We've got one down here. If we had QICs, we could also use that to bolster our range here. And because I'm at rank one, I need to spend six of my power and move it into the Gaia area in order to transform this planet. It will show me this interface here, telling me to move six power. At the moment, that is all of my power. So I need to move all of this and hit confirm, moving all of that power into this green area. And when it's in this green area, it cannot be spent in any way. And it doesn't benefit from income if you gain any power between rounds. The last and final action is to form a federation. In the form a federation, you need to select this button, select which federation token you wish to gain. And there are a limited number of these as indicated by this time symbol. You'll gain a number of victory points equal to the victory point amount and the resources depicted on each of these tokens. Once you've selected which one you want, you hit confirm and only these green tokens can be used to reach rank five or gain an advanced technology. Anything already on the gray side cannot be used as you need to flip the token over to the gray side in order to gain those techs and level five research. Next, we need to form buildings via satellites to be equal to seven worth of power. Remember, your buildings have a power rating listed here underneath each of the building icons. So for me to reach seven, it's actually impossible for me to do this in the first turn. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is not a formed planet yet. So I would need to have one more planet with a mine of one in order to create the seven. And you want to try and have these planets as close as possible, because for each satellite you place on the board to link these up, you will need to spend one power from your power pools here and discard it from the game. If I did have enough, however, I would place satellites down in all the yellow spaces I've selected that are in blank space areas, not on the planets with the buildings, and place that many satellites on the board, whilst also spending that many power from these power pools, removing it from the game. And then I would immediately gain the resources and points listed on the token that I have selected. Let's just go over a few other actions on the board here. So down in the bottom right here, we have some QIC actions. These work the same way as these power actions, but you spend QICs instead. And each of these do a different effect. This one will give me three points plus one point for every different type of planet I've colonized. This one will let me immediately gain all the resources and points on a federation token that I've already obtained. And this one will let me gain a tech child of my choice, either a normal one or an advanced one, and advance in the research area as per usual. And the last and final action you need to know is pass. And when you run out of things that you want to do on your turn, you'll want to pass. The player who passes first will go first in the next round. When you pass, you return the booster tile that you've selected back to the pool of booster tiles and select from the ones remaining. You cannot select the same booster tile twice in a row. I can now get asked to select the new booster tile for the next round. And my old one goes back. At the end of the round, all the action spots are removed from here. Everyone gains their income from the buildings and technologies that they have. And player will start with the player who passed first, then with the player who passed second, third, and so on. We can see the first round scoring marker is gone. And now we score points for terraforming areas on the board. For each terraforming step we take, we get two points. Also between rounds, the gear phase took place. You can see all my energy got moved from this gear pool back into energy pool one. And this planet has now turned green with my gigaformer still on there. When I go to build a mine next, I can build a mine on this planet and I can build it for just spending the mine cost. I do not need to spend a QIC to build here. And when I do that, I get to return this gigaformer back to my board. Then I can send it out again to start another Gaia project on a purple planet. Point scoring is tracked all the way through the game, and at the end of the game, score points equal to these two scoring boards, these technologies, and these resources. This is the only end game scoring that takes place. The rest of the scoring takes place during the game and when events happen, and your score is tracked here. I hope this video has been useful, and good luck playing Gaia Project. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to Let's Start Playing.
go a long way to help me making more of these videos. And thanks for watching.